React India. Namaste everyone. I hope everyone has been enjoying their time in Goa and learning a lot of new things in React India. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is my first time speaking on such a massive stage and I'm really excited to see how it goes. And as this is the last set of talks, I know everybody is excited about the after party. So I'll try to wrap it up as soon as I can. Before directly jumping into the topic, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. I am Vidhi Kataria. I am a geek working on innovative ideas at Geekians. You folks can follow me on Twitter. I might be the second Vidhi Kataria to join Twitter, therefore I go by Twitter handle Vidhi Kataria 2. <laughs> So we, the, we have this thing in Geeky Ants where we believe in making development a better experience for all the developers. And we have built a lot of tools towards fulfilling that vision. One of our major breakthrough came in form of native base, an open source UI component library, which provides easy, accessible, universal components. Native base helps in easy and faster development of our application. Yes, yes, I know it was not the fastest, but we fixed it later on. We'll get to it. We also worked on Native Base Builder, which was a no-code, low-code tool. It provides a GUI where you can add Native Base components on the screen and get code for it. While building Builder, we realized that there was no way to maintain design consistency amongst the screen. To solve this problem, Design System Creator came into picture. And also, it also provides a dashboard where we can edit the theme according to the requirement and use it inside Builder. If you had attended React India 2022, you must be familiar with the flow which was shared in detail by my colleague in her talk. We were working on connecting the dots here, but this is the bigger idea of the research team at Geeky Ants, which I am a proud full stack developer of. So before getting into my talk, I want to share an idea, something I have seen and felt in day to day life. Many developers, me being one of them has this FOMO regarding what is the latest thing happening in the industry. Because we all want to adopt quickly, but to be honest, it is really hard to keep track of what's new in this rapidly evolving ecosystem. So why not have a framework that provides a common API that wraps all these exciting tech and provides a simple solution to all the developers. Suppose one day you are using Prisma as your ORM, but now you want to shift to Drizzle. All you have to do is to remove the Prisma plugin or something and install the Drizzle one and do some basic setup of migrations and you are all set. Your API stays the same because someone is working behind the scenes to make your life easy. Spoiler alert, it's us, but we'll get back to that later. So coming back to the topic, why not build something like this? A framework that does all these things and supports an extensible pluggable system and provides every freedom and ease of mind to its user. So let's discuss about the common problems that are faced while creating full stack applications using other frameworks, because then only we can understand why we had to build yet another full stack JavaScript framework. And that's what my talk is about today. So let's start. When I asked chat GPT, what are the most common problems faced with any full stack app development? It responded with the following. First one is com complexity. Full stack app development in involves multiple layers of technologies, including front end, back end, database, and all of them are interlinked in a, mesh, in a mesh of APIs, and managing the complexity can be an overwhelming task. Integration issues ensuring seamless integration between different parts of stack, example, front end and back end, sorry, can be complex, especially when you are using different technologies or framework. Let's take an example. If you are using an iPhone and you, you use, tend to use AirPods, MacBook, iPad, because you want seamless interactivity, integration, and same user experience with all the products. Similarly, while developing a full stack application, it would be nice. Sorry for that. Now, coming back to the issues that we were discussing while building a full stack app, we already discussed complexity, integration issues. Next is data complexity. Maintaining data consistency across different parts of application and ensuring that data is synchronized can be a challenge, especially in real-time application. 
Next would be authentication and authorization. Implementing secure user authentication and authorization mechanisms can be complex. Next is scalability. Planning and achieving scalability as the application grows can be a significant challenge. This includes scaling both the front-end and back-end components. Next is performance optimization. Optimizing the performance of the application, including, including page load times, API response time, and database queries is crucial, but can be complex. But you know, all these points are good, but there are still some problems left. Let's add them to our list as well. Next is keeping up with the latest tech, testing and quality assurance, version control, and collaboration. I'm sure there will be many different points that you might have in your list, but let's go with these for now. We will be discussing in detail about these points because rest of them will require a separate talk of their own, maybe React India 2024. I have also removed testing and quality assurance from these slides because of time constraints. Now coming back to the discussion of how we fix the previously mentioned issues, let's discuss about GlueStack framework and how it co comes into picture. GlueStack framework is universal, fully typed, fast to adopt, quick to handle, improves your DX, and it's pluggable. Now, enough of me blabbering. Let's have a quick sneak peek at the fully working GlueStack app. Just scan this QR code on your, shown on the screen. This will open a form for you. I'll wait for a few minutes for you folks to fill up the form. So here, all of you shared your GitHub IDs, and we just fetched all of these details from a database. And we have rendered it on screen. One second. Yeah. So ne let's see how we build this basic app. F yeah. First step would be bootstrapping. To set up a GlueStack app, you just need to run npx create GlueStack app command. This will do the basic setup, which consists of develop plugin, which is the core of the application. It also sets up and provides a local Glue CLI. The folder structure will look something like this. The glue folder, dot glue folder, which keeps the config that is needed by the framework to work. It keeps the persistent information about the installed plugin and the list of instances. The config folder contains the entry point of all the SDKs for different backend services that can be used in client or server side. We will discuss about these later in the slides. Glue is a Node.js file command, a command that points to a CLI of locally installed framework. We can use this by running Node Glue. Now for the demo, we added the web plugin, the GlueStack UI plugin, the service gateway plugin, functions plugin, database and database client plugins, and the SDKs plugin. Oh, that's a lot of plugins right there. But don't worry, if and when we will make it public, we will add presets too, so this will be a smooth sale. Coming back now to the web plugin. Now the web plugin creates an instance of for the website, and this is how the folder structure looks like. It is a simple Next.js app. I use GlueStack UI themed, which is the upcoming next version of Nativeways, but more on that later, and design my UI in the web plugin instance. Now I need to store the data you guys shared. Storing the data in the database and retrieving it is the last piece of puzzle that was handled with database client SDK. See how easy it is to make a sweet, simple app in three to four steps? As you can guess, guess making this framework was not a sm smooth, easy road for us. We faced a lot of challenges on the way. Let's discuss a few of them. The first challenge was creating a pluggable architecture that makes sense. This plugin system is very similar to what Sanket shared in his talk today. I will try to share the high-level picture, but if you want to go into deets, I will recommend watching Sanket's talk. Here are the few things that we expect from a pluggable system. A pluggable can have multiple instances. A plugins should be able to communicate between themselves. It should be extensible. You can create your own plugin as and when required. Obviously, the process of adding and removing plugins should be simple. Handling de dependency conflicts between plugins. And most importantly, debugging should be easy. We had to build a robust plugin system because all the plugins with, will follow the, this. Plugins can be of various type and perform various operations, so we had to keep that in mind too. So let's try to understand how we made it work. Yeah. GlueStack plugin system has two parts. 
the core plugin the core plugin one second the core plugin provides the foundation on which developers can build their app the foundation includes the initial folder structure a local cli setup that helps in plugin management and easy bootstrapping it it also provides a communication link between various other plugins second rest of gluestack plugins we provide a set of plugins that work on top of core plugin we when a user adds a plugin according to the requirement of their application it gets registered with the co core plugin and the core plugin always knows which plugin are installed and what's the instance name and path and what type of plugin it is each plugin can have multiple instances as well for example in case of erp system a user might need a website for their customers and one website for their administration so we can have two instances of web plugin named customer and admin these website will be independent of each other but still can access the same backend and database services this solves the two challenges mentioned above we also export a plugin class and we have tried to keep it self explanatory and fully typed so that it is easy for anyone to create their custom plugin as well these custom plugins can be used as any other plugin and can can communicate with the core plugin and other glue stack plugins as well we also have plans to add a cli command to bootstrap a new plugin so that this process becomes even more easier this solves the third issue as well now how to add or remove plugins and maintain them as well to solve this issue we created a cli that handles all these functionalities and provides with a simple interface to manage your app we provide a cli all the other plug plugins work on top of the cli instance and provides node glue commands it provides provides commands like build clean restart prepare up etc now with so many plugins there come dependency conflicts as well so to, so to tackle that all the plugin dependencies and their related information are stored in dot glue folder we use npm tree to create a dependency graph of the plugin and handle this issue like we have sdk and database plugin which are dependent on the core plugin and gateway plugin is dependent on sdk plugin so to install gateway plugin one must install sdk and core plugins first now coming to the last point debugging since there are a lot of dynamic components involved here we wanted to keep things simple at the end result for our users so when you build your app this compiles the instances and sdk to generate build files which are basically a kind of copy of your instances so in a scenario where there is a error in your code and that got compiled to the build files we need to point to the instance path but by default the error path is shown from build files to fix this we source mapped the build files to their respective instances this solves the last issue as well now the next challenge that we faced was deciding what tech stack to use to build the entire full stack framework let's start with front end hmm. so front end in the react ecosystem is currently dominated by next js i think you all will agree with me and it has its reasons i mean the framework is simply awesome and it is taking astronomical steps with each version so it pretty, pretty much settles it right no if i could straight away use next js for everything then i won't be talking about this framework here at react india while not many full stack app require back end extensive tasks such as queue crons etc but many do and if you really want to create a full stack framework you have to provide these options as well so as you may have already guessed glue stack framework supports heavy operation like these and you don't have to care about booting other another server for that this is why we are using next js for front end development only and using service gateway which is a molecular app for all the other operations we also have plans to remove next entirely and ship our own alternative in the future now coming to the back end as i already mentioned we have a single molecular js app why molecular you may ask why not node js directly and make services on top of it molecular provides better segregation and it is more apt to our microservices architecture we can easily create a service for a plugin like storage and database and write a required handler to make it work quickly and this all can be accessed via sdks as well which adds to the charm 
many of you might be thinking, if my front-end is a Next.js app and back-end is a molecular app, then, I, then to communicate between them, I might have to use a HTTP request call or with Exios or Fetch API and also handle that cause error too. Same old thing. But we got you. We provide a client SDK for accessing functions in web plugin. No need to write those repetitive HTTP requests. Plus, using SDKs make your code more readable. Another thing that is running in trend are the edge functions. This is also a major target that we want to achieve with this framework. And I would say we have already made SDKs for that. All that is left is the ed edge network to make it work flawlessly. And we hope to reach there soon. Also on a side note, we are exploring Nest.js and Java Spring Boot to replace Molecular JS in the future. Next come this comes the database. This path involves two things, integrating a database and then querying it. Setting up a database was easy with Docker images, but the tricky part was how to provide a SDK so that it is easy to query the DB directly from the front end, and that to fully typed and secure. Because traditionally, this flow feels too cumbersome. I know with GraphQL, this issue was solved somewhat, but still, I have to learn GraphQL then. Plus, it's come, plus it comes with its own challenges and problems. So to make your life easy, we are currently providing a database client plugin that sets up Prisma and uses the ORM to sync the database. And by leveraging the service, uh, service gateway, we can call the database API directly from Prisma. We have created a proxy database SDK that sends the query to the backend whenever a function is called using it. Here is an example of the same. You just need to import client SDK in your Next.js app, and you'll get all the typings of Prisma client in DB client SDK instance. Calling this sends the query as a serialized string to the backend where it is passed to call the Prisma SDK and perform appropriate action. Last but not the least would be media storage, which has the same issue. That is, we can't access it from the front end. Hence, again, a client SDK for the storage plugin was needed. We are using MinIO for the storage SDK right now. We generate a SDK that provides you with all the functions from MinIO on the front end and internally calls an Exios request to the service gateway that also has a service created when you add the storage plugin to your application. The last part was running and deploying all these different projects as a single unit. Here enters, enters Bolt. Bolt is a universal project runner. It runs child processes, Docker containers inside a VM. It sets up a developer environment for us. We are maintaining a mono repo structure where each plugin instance is deployed as a different service using Bolt. You just need to run node blue start command. This will build, prepare, and run your service on local or on Docker based on the kind of service. Then to deploy the built application, we needed some tool that can understand what instance is what and deploy it accordingly. So we built Seal. Seal deploys your entire GlueStack application from user interface to the servers and databases hassle-free. Just run node glue deploy command, and your app will be deployed on Seal platform. The platform includes various components and services that work together to enable the deployment and hosting of application with high reliability and performance. It also automatically scales your resources to meet the needs of your users. Both of these tools solves a generic problem and covers a vast topic, and that will require another talk of its own. This framework is still in experimental phase, and we do not recommend using it for production application unless you are us. Now, GlueStack framework is a small part of what we are cooking at Geeky Ants. We are building a complete ecosystem, which includes a UI component library, which we call GlueStack UI. GlueStack UI is very similar to native base. It ships designed accessible universal components, but it is much, much, much more performant than native is. So if you have used native base and liked it, try GlueStack UI out. You will definitely love it. We also, sh also ship a styling engine, engine GlueStack Style, 
which is used to create components of GlueStack UI. Then comes this framework, Bolt, Seal, DA DSX, then Builder, which is a no-code, low-code tool to build apps, and a marketplace for GlueStack framework and Builder plugins, which we call Craft. That's it. I hope it was short. Thank you, everyone. This talk and this experiment is a collective effort from the entire team of Geekians. So giving the credit credits where it's due. Also, a special shout out to Sanket for motivating me to give this talk and share our work on such a massive stage like React India. Thank you, everyone. Also, we can connect on Twitter. And if you guys want to talk more about what we are building, we can discuss after the conference. Have a lovely time.